Well, joining us now on Encounter is Obian Uju Ikocha, the author of Target Africa, this book right here. I hope I got that close. Excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent. You did work, Heaven. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me um, on. Now, uh, maybe if you could just start off by t telling us what made you decide to write this book, and is, is this the first book that you've ever written? This is my first book, so um, hopefully there should be others coming afterwards, I pray. But then the reason why I wrote this book was that um, uh, the book uh, really reflected or, or was kind of a collection of things that uh, my, my work leading up to, up to my writing it. I have for a number of years now I've worked uh, within the pro-life movement but it's not the pro-life movement in the way uh, a lot of people are accustomed to it or are used to it but uh, mine came just from the interest that I, I, I had finding out or just the interest I had on the relationship between Western, Western countries and uh, the developing world, particularly African countries. So um, I had gone to the United Nations. I had spoken at different forums. I had been speaking as an African woman, speaking to Western audience, telling them about the cultural views and values of the African people. And then uh, in the face of it, knowing that uh, a lot of the Western donors, a lot of the Western helpers who come towards Africa uh, come with, a, with their own agenda and their own ideological uh, agenda and they want to, to maneuver us and they want to move African people to see things their own way or to, to uh, believe in what they believe, especially on, on these very important issues. But what makes it really painful for me or what has made it very painful for me in the course of my work is that they come also as very wealthy people. So if you come with lots of money, whatever you say carries weight. So their work has really been a kind of ideological colonization of the African people, as I had seen it, there had been a kind of cultural imperialism, imperialism as I had seen it. So that was all what led me uh, to write in Target Africa. And maybe if you could speak on um, some of the specific uh, influences that uh, you uh, pick out in the book, too, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, maybe expound on that a little bit. Sure. So, so <laughs> normally, when you're working on the international stage, the, well, what everyone says or what everyone wants to believe is that every country is sovereign and every country is equal, you know, in a sense of speaking, that uh, one country should not be able to to sway the laws and policies of another country or even the constitution of another country. So one specific example is that in 2010, uh, the Kenyan government decided to review their constitution, so they were going to come up with a new Kenyan constitution. So that was uh, back in the last uh, administration when you come to America, and it was Secretary Clinton who was the Secretary of State. So how is it that Kenya doing their constitution uh, is is going to be influenced by America, but it almost happened because the Kenyan people decided they wanted to put one line that wasn't there before in their constitution, and that was that human life begins at conception. Right. So we, I mean, th that was incredible. That was amazing for the pro-life movement in Kenya. But then during that time, there was so much push and lobbying from the International Planned Parenthood Federation and even Planned Parenthood Federation of America, they were writing emails and letters to Secretary Clinton asking her to stop the Kenyans from putting this one line in their constitution because it would make it impossible uh, or difficult to, to legalize abortion down the line. So that, that's a kind of um, maneuvering and, and uh, high-powered influence that a lot of the Western people have towards African countries or have in the lives of African countries. It's also the example of the wife of Bill Gates, Melinda Gates, who had done a massive contraception project back in 2012. Uh, and in this book, I write quite a bit about that. Uh, and she's trying to, to move Africa, not just move contraceptives into Africa, but she was trying to move African governments into this uh, you know, worldview of, of population control. So so it's th they're pulling this off every day. Yeah, and you, and you talk about that um, the colonization and yes. how some of the countries that um, sp supposedly broke away are still influencing. Yes. And how hard is it, and why is it so hard? I guess for some of these African countries to sort of make that break uh, away from that influence. Well, it starts by the economic dependence on on Western countries. I mean, it is unfortunate that we find ourselves in these very difficult positions, but a lot of the African countries are in 
are so tied to aid and they're so dependent on aid that it's almost like an addiction. And as long as they are tied to aid, I believe in my point of view that as long as they are dependent on the Western donors, uh, in many ways that's, uh, the gateway remains open for ideological maneuvering and ideological colonization because first of all there is economic, a kind of economic uh, dependence and an economic addiction to, to, to the Western, to, to the money of the Western donor. Before yeah. I let you go, too, I just wanted to uh, talk to you about Culture of Life Africa, too. Maybe if you could talk about your uh Yeah, so Culture of Life Africa, I founded it about five years ago, and it's um, you, you can see a lot about it on cultureoflifeafrica.com. So it's just an organization I formed just to, to bring this message forward to people that the Africans are not... Uh, we're not stupid. You know, Africa is not a vacuum. We have our cultures, we have our different values, we have our views. Uh, and, and a lot of these things, especially on life issues, especially on, on issues like motherhood, on marriage, on human sexuality, on youth, we have these, all, all these um, uh, things that, w that would be our cultural heritage. So my, my mission in life is really to bring this message especially to the Western audience uh, for them to get, have maybe some better understanding on where the Africans stand on these issues and how important it is to the Africans. So that's what Culture of Life Africa uh, does. Uh, just uh, you know, raising these issues. Yeah, and a great way to find out is through this book as That's well, right. Target Africa. Thank you so much for being Thank with you, us. Thank you, Kevin. And maybe uh, if people want to get this book, where would they go to? So it, it, my my publisher is Ignatius Press, so definitely you can get it through Ignatius Press. But it's also on Amazon.com. Uh, so just go to Amazon.com. The name, title of the book is Target Africa, and order a copy. Read it and put a review on Amazon. Thanks so much for being with us, Ovi Anuju. And we are going to take a quick break right now. We'll be back with more of Encounter right after this.